All right, guys, so we've learned a bit about sexual versus asexual reproduction, and here's where I just kind of clarify things for you and <clears throat> uh, just finalize it and you put it in your notes. So make sure you're taking notes from this slideshow. Uh, your I can statement, I can compare and contrast the advantages and disadvantages of sexual and asexual reproduction. Um, and a lot of that, of course, has to do with whether the offspring is uniform or diverse. So we're going to start with sexual reproduction, which is a type of reproduction in which the genetic materials from two different cells combine, producing an offspring. That means that there are two parents in sexual reproduction. There are always two parents. The cells that combine are called sex cells, and we learned in human body systems that the female sex cell is called the egg, and the male sex cell is called the sperm. And that's the case not just in humans, but in, in any sexually reproducing uh, organism. Fertilization is when an egg cell and a sperm cell join together. A new cell is formed and is called a zygote. So when the egg cell and sperm cell come together and it becomes a fertilized cell, a single, those two cells become a single fertilized cell and that single fertilized cell is called a zygote. Uh, there are some advantages to sexual reproduction. Um, probably the main advantage is the diverse offspring. You get genetic variation among the offspring uh, when you have two different sets of genes coming together to form one organism. Half of the DNA comes from mom, half of the DNA comes from dad, um, and it's just kind of random which half comes from which parent, and it gives you variation. Um, and that genetic variation helps you uh, because it gives individuals in the population slight differences, and then it helps you uh, survive. Uh, for example, plants can uh, be better able to resist diseases if they have genetic variation. Um, and genetic variation also gives rise to certain traits that can develop uh, to help resist harsh environments um, or give you advantages um, when you're searching for a mate or different things like that. Um, genetic variation just gives a species as a whole more chances of survival. Another advantage to sexual reproduction which humans have uh, taken advantage of is called selective breeding. So this is when humans take uh, animals or plants and choose which ones they want to breed together uh, to develop types of plants and animals that have desirable traits. So for example, uh, farmers might use selective breeding to get bigger and bigger cows or cows with like more and more meat on them if they're looking for beef or maybe cows that have better and better milk production. Um, this is selective breeding. It's used a lot in agriculture and farming to get uh, better plants, bigger animals, things like that. It's also used in the pet industry to get more desirable pets. Um, you've probably heard of different dog breeds. Um, that's those dog breeds came about through selective breeding. People uh, bred dogs based on traits that they wanted. Um, so if you're looking for a dog that's, you know, loyal and big and friendly, then people have bred a dog like that. And it's going to be very different than a dog that's small and likes to sit in your lap and yap at people. Totally different, right? Uh, but desirable. Both of those are desirable to different kinds of people. There are also, of course, some disadvantages to sexual reproduction. Uh, the main disadvantage is the time and energy that it takes. Uh, organisms have to grow and develop until they're old enough to produce sex cells. So uh, when an organism reproduces sexually, uh, they can't start reproducing sexually right away as soon as they're born. They have to wait until they've grown and developed. Um, and then they have to search and find a mate. Uh, remember, it takes two to reproduce sexually. So the one organism has to find the second one uh, that is willing to reproduce sexually with them. Uh, searching for a mate can expose individuals to predators, diseases, or harsh environmental conditions. Um, for example, if, if some animals were searching for a mate and they had to go out and look, then maybe a predator might find them and eat them is not ideal. Um, if a person right now were looking for somebody to date, let's say, uh, right now, 
then they would have to go out and expose themselves to potentially, you know, catching the coronavirus. So that's a, a potential disease um, that they could get. Um, another disadvantage is that fertilization cannot take place during pregnancy. So once an organism is pregnant, then it cannot be fertilized again during that pregnancy. And pregnancy can last as long as two years for some mammals. Um, you may know that it's about nine months for humans, but during that nine months that a, a human woman is pregnant, she cannot be fertilized with another baby. All right, and here are some pictures that give some examples of sexual reproduction, um, both plants and animals spiders, snakes, all kinds of things reproduce sexually. All right, so we're going to move on to asexual reproduction now. Asexual reproduction, the A here, the prefix A means not, so it just means not sexual reproduction. Uh, asexual reproduction is when one parent can produce offspring uh, by itself without any fertilization. This results in uniform offspring, uniform meaning all the same, because the offspring inherit all of their DNA from one parent, so they're genetically identical to each other and to their parent. There is no difference in the genes. There are different types of asexual reproduction, so we're going to talk about the different types. Uh, the first one is fission, also known as binary fission. Uh, this is cell division in prokaryotes and some single-celled eukaryotes that forms two genetically identical cells. The DNA is copied, the cell begins to grow longer, pulling the two copies apart. The cell membrane pinches inward in the middle of the cell, and the cell splits to form two new uniform identical offspring. So that's binary fission. We've learned about that when we talked about um, the paramecium, which this is a picture of the paramecium, um, and the amoeba. Uh, other examples are bacteria, uh, E. coli, which is just a specific kind of bacteria, uh, pond critters such as the paramecium or the amoeba. Budding is another type of asexual reproduction. So budding is when a new organism grows by mitosis, which we learned about mitosis recently, and cell division on the body of its parent. So if you look at the picture, you can see uh, there's the parent, which is the larger, larger hydra here, and then the smaller one growing off of it, that's the bud. The bud or offspring is identical to the parent, genetically identical. Uh, remember, it's just one parent organism, so genetically identical. When the bud is large enough, it can break off of the parent and live on its own, so it doesn't stay on the parent the whole time. Uh, but sometimes, in some cases, for some organisms, it does stay on the parent. It remains attached, and they form a colony. Uh, some examples of budding are yeast. Uh, this is a picture of hydra, and um, some cactus species will do this. Another form of asexual reproduction is regeneration. Regeneration occurs when an offspring grows from a piece of its parent. Um, so regeneration can either produce new organisms or produce new body parts. In the case of sea stars, for example, regeneration can produce a whole new organism. One arm of a sea star can grow into a whole new organism. Sea urchins, sea cucumbers, sponges, and planarians can also do this. Um, and Or it can just produce new body parts, not a whole new organism, as in the case of things like geckos. Newts, tadpoles, crabs, hydra, and zebrafish can also do this, um, but we usually uh, uh, think about geckos when we think about regeneration of body parts. All right, another form of asexual reproduction is vegetative propagation. Vegetative here tells you that this is uh, all about plants. Vegetative propagation is when uniform offspring grow from a part of a parent plant. So in the example given here with a strawberry plant, the parent plant sends out runners, uh, which is almost like little branches along the ground. Where the runner touches the ground, roots can grow. A new plant is produced at that point, and even if the runner gets broken apart, the new plant can survive and continue. Each new plant is uniform and identical to the parent. So strawberries, potatoes, ivy, crabgrass, they all grow like this. Another way that you can do vegetative propagation um, is by cutting off a piece of a plant and planting that, and that's called doing uh, plant cuttings. And farmers will often, farmers or gardeners will often do that, uh, 
use a plant cutting to grow a new uh, organism. So some advantages of asexual reproduction. It enables organisms to reproduce without a mate, so you don't have to waste the time and energy finding somebody else to reproduce with you. You just do it all by yourself. And that enables some organisms to rapidly reproduce a large number of uniform offspring. So if you want to get a lot of offspring and you don't care about genetic diversity, then you, you can do it asexually and, and get a lot of offspring really quickly. Um, this is why bacteria multiply so quickly. In the picture, that's, that's mold multiplying very quickly like that. Uh, obviously, the disadvantages to asexual reproduction is that their offspring are identical. So there's no genetic variation that gives the organism a better chance for survival. Um, so without that genetic variation, you don't have that better chance for survival. So for example, if a weed killer can kill a parent plant, it will also kill the offspring. So it'll just kill everything. A whole species can be wiped out from a disease. Just one disease can come in and wipe out the whole species. Uh, you know that when you use hand sanitizer, it kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria. Um, but you would never expect anything to kill 99.9% .9 of people because people are too genetically varied. Um, another thing is that dangerous mutations in DNA can happen. And if that happens in the parent, then all of that parent's offspring will have that dangerous mutation. Now, sometimes that's an advantage because sometimes it's an advantageous mutation, but oftentimes it's dangerous mutations. Mutations are usually neutral, but they can be dangerous and um, be dangerous for the, the organism. All right, so here are some examples of asexual reproduction. And the last thing that you guys are going to need to do um, is create a creature that reproduces asexually. So any creature, you, it's up to you. You can make up your own creature that reproduces asexually. You're going to draw the creature and name the creature. You're also going to describe how the creature reproduces asexually. Remember, there are all those different ways to reproduce asexually. So describe which one of those ways your creature uses. Describe one advantage of reproducing whichever way your creature uses. And describe one disadvantage of reproducing that way. Um, you're also going to show the uniform offspring of your creature. So uh, that is your activity for the day. And that is it for the lecture today.